All right, guys, today we're going to be looking at compound inequalities. And I'm going to introduce this to you by showing you the Battlestar Galactica. This is a ride in Universal Studios Singapore. It's the tallest dueling roller coaster in the world. I like this blue one called the Cylon. It goes and does all these flips and corkscrews and all this other stuff. But there's four people in each row. You can kind of see those four guys right here in, in the blue ride here. And there's four people in each row, and there are some height restrictions on this ride. The first restriction is that you must be at least 122 centimeters tall just to get in on the thing, just to be allowed to stand in line. You've got to be that tall. Now, there's a second restriction that anybody that's taller than 182 centimeters can't sit on the outside seats. You have to sit on the two seats in the middle. All right, so I'm going to ask two questions here. First, let's write an inequality representing how tall you must be to ride this ride, Battlestar Galactica. Most people are okay with this one. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to say that x equals our height. And so for this first question, we need our height to be at least 122 centimeters. So at least means it could be equal to 122, but it could be more. So x can be greater than or equal to 122 centimeters, just like that. All right, now we'll go on to part B. Write an inequality representing how tall you must be to ride on the outside seats. Now, most people will look at this. They'll say, okay, well, they have to be, let's see, if they're taller than 182, they can't sit outside. So that means if they're smaller than 182 or if they're 182, they can. So most people would do something like this. They would say, okay, x has to be less than or equal to 182 centimeters. And that's wrong. Why is that wrong? Okay, well, let's pretend for a minute that I am a little two-and-a-half-year-old kid, just like my daughter. Let's say uh, my height is approximately 90 centimeters. Okay, according to this statement right here, my daughter, who is two-and-a-half years old and only 90 centimeters tall, is allowed to ride on the outside seats of the ride. Is that true? No, it's not. You must be at least 122 centimeters tall in order to get on the ride. And so we then have to be able to show that not only are you less than 182, but you also have to be bigger than 122. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. One is to just, on the other side of the x, say, well, on this side, x is less than 182. On this side, x is greater than 122. Okay? So anybody that is greater than or equal to 122 or less than or equal to 182 can ride on this right. Now there's another way to write this. If you want to do it separately, you can say that x is greater than or equal to 122 and x is less than or equal to 182. And some people like doing it that way because then you've got the separate things. Some people get confused about the signs. And so this way maybe is a little bit easier for you. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about this and. When we're doing compound inequalities, when we're putting things together, we actually have two words that we're going to use quite often. One of them is and, and one of them is or. Okay, now the situation of and, if I said that x is greater than negative 3 and x is less than 2, that means that x has to, has to apply to both of these. So if I were to put this on a number line, right? Here's my negative 3, there's 0, there's 2. If I were saying and, x has to be greater than negative 3. So if I were to graph that answer, it would be right here. x has to be less than 2. So if I were to graph that answer, it would be from 2 and then going less. But where are both of these true? And means they both need to be working. And so they're both true from this place to that place. So open circle on the 3, open circle on the 2, and everything in between is both greater than negative 3 and less than 2. Now let's, let's look at a different situation. Let's say that x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than 2. So I flip the signs around. So this time we want to count where either one of them is true. So here's my 0, here's the negative 3, and here's the 2. So this one would be x is less than negative 3, which would go that way. This one is x is greater than 2, which goes that way. So where are, is this or this true? In both of those areas. And so actually this right here would be the answer where I'm showing that it's less than negative 3 and I'm showing that it's greater than 2. All right? So there you go. That's and and or.